Hey guys, welcome back to the trail. I've been holding out on Malham Cove until the weather was just right, and I think you'd agree, the weather looks just right. There below us is the town of Settle. That's where we've parked up. We're gonna follow the Penham right away over the tops, come down to Malham Cove. We're gonna carry on to Janet's Foss, have a look at both of those quite well-known landmarks in the hiking community. And then we're gonna circle back round, grab a few more moorland hilltops. So we've got a lot of climbing to do, two and a half thousand feet in combined elevation. And I chose today because the weather report gave this as a completely clear, cloudless day. And so far, it has lived up to that. Absolutely freezing. Yeah, it was minus two on the way up. Uh, around about zero when I parked the car, so we've got the uh, down jacket on underneath my sweater. I've got my gloves on when I'm not filming. And uh, but we're already had to do a, a quite a steep hike out of the town, obviously, to get this elevation. I've only done about 0.3 of a mile, so I'm quite warm. I've got a hot brew uh, ready to be boiled later if needs be. Well, yeah, buzzing. Weather's fantastic, and as you can see, the town below dappled in sunlight. So there we go, I'm going to really enjoy this climb. It's rare I'm ever going to say that, but we'll get up onto the top, see what else we can see from up there. Man, the views, the views already. So initially it's a 14 mile uh, circular clockwise. Went across the tops, Penham, right away. Malin Cove, Janus Foss. Well, originally the 14 miles didn't include Janus Foss, which is about a click and a half further on. So I'm gonna include that. So we will be looking towards 16, 17 miles. But if you take the Penham right away up, from Settle. Uh, it's not quite a massively steep incline uh, as if you were just going straight up, which you can do, there are paths going straight up. So it's up to you which you decide. I took, I've picked this one because I could tell from the topography that this would be a bit more gradual. Oh, and it also gives me a, an open view of the town below. Plenty of photographs being taken, which I upload to Facebook I put a few on Instagram, Pilgrim Hiker, but uh, mostly I can put 70, well I can put as many as I want on Facebook. Uh, so that's where my photographs go, and obviously you're watching the video, so. Oh, absolutely fantastic. Got it all to myself so far, just saw one dog walker. I'm nice and toasty warm from the exertion. Well, 16 miles, ah, oh, sunshine. And I'm hoping to get a brew at Malham Cove. There's bound to be a visitor's centre, isn't there?
So that there is uh, Penny Ghent. We're inside in Ingleborough. The Yorkshire Three Peaks. Horton in Ribblesdale is down there. Those caves behind me, they were the Jubilee Cave. And you could see they kind of burrowed into this little bit of hillside here. I mean, I'm sure some people have tried getting through them, but not for me. Yeah, cool. So I'm going to carry on. It's chilly, but I'm sweating. <laughs> sweating. Uh, two and a half miles. It took us a while to do that because of it being elevation, but sweaty. But it's going to be a warm in this afternoon. <sighs> Definitely. We have this moorland all to ourselves. It's great to see uh, Penny Ghent there. If you look at my Yorkshire Three Peak video, somebody was asking me about the Yorkshire Three Peaks this week. And uh, just even from here, it looks enormous. And it, I always make sure that's the last hill I climb on the Three Peaks. And it's a long way back to the car. Well, this week with uh, my wife being away, it's given me an opportunity to change some of the things I do and you might notice if you were to watch these videos right from the beginning and see the transformation as sort of the last two years I've done things I've used different pieces of kit and modified the way I hike and do multi-day hikes uh, one of the things I wanted to do this week was build a space for myself where all my kit was laid out uh, for day hiking my long-term stuff, tent and whatnot, go in boxes uh, in storage. That's just to prevent damage. So under the stairs, I've cleared the space. So in the kitchen, I've got access to this uh, area where stuff's hung up. My bag is there. There's a set of uh, plastic drawers there. And what I do in the morning, come down, my boots will be there. Uh, is load the bag in the morning, fill in bottles, uh, fill in snacks, food, etc. And then at night, once I've done the hike, I come back, empty everything out, empty rubbish, replace stuff that needs replacing, like coffee, batteries. And then there's a tray I take upstairs to my study. And that's where we do the recharging and the editing. And so it's a kind of pack the bag, unpack the bag every day. So that when I come on the trail that morning, I've seen exactly what's gone into the bag. And I know everything's there and if anything needs replacing or is damaged I'll know straight away in the past what I used to do was um, leave the bag packed and then come out and then I realized at times it didn't always suit the day's hike uh, there were things I wanted to change things I take out in the morning based on the weather report uh, and based on how I'm feeling so I've been able to do that this week and change a few bits buy a few more bits uh, a few more gas cans I like to keep a stock of and uh, yeah generally it's been a hiking week while my wife's been away she's due back tonight in the early hours of tomorrow morning so I'll drive to Manchester and pick her up and then I'm gonna have a couple of days off uh, I'm gonna rest and recuperate I'm watching at the moment uh, Pure Flix which is a streaming channel for Christian content and it's really good stuff uh, some of the stuff's available on DVD but this channel uh, comes from America. Really good. David A.R. White is the one behind it. And good biblical teaching in each movie. And yeah, the low budget, but the storytelling easily makes up for the lack of special effects. And uh, yeah, it's been quite edifying this week. So I'll be doing that. I'll be editing. And then by Saturday, Sunday, I hope we will be out again. I've still got a few maps left before I need to make some more. And there you go. We're up to date. Still reading the same books I mentioned in my last video and uh, waiting on my new cards to come that I'll be handing out. It's been a good week, really good week, really blessed and really grateful. Uh, such a gift to be able to do something other than work for a change. Uh, but you know, on Tuesday, I'll be back. I'll be back.
four miles in, might as well have a break. Dark Thunder! Zero Blast! Yeah! Well, I'd happily walk the Penham Bridle Way all day long. It has been entirely this for about three miles. <laughs> it's just gravelly, firm packed gravel. It's obviously used as a track for farmers, but fantastic. What are we on? Obviously, we're heading due east. Five and a half miles, a mile and a half since the break. I've just been plodding along, lost in my own thoughts. Taking the occasional picture, but blue sky, green grass, <laughs> what more can you ask for? Absolutely fantastic, not a soul in sight, except the sheep. Absolutely beautiful, man. Just heading up, see a signpost here. Not gonna change our direction, but there's other tracks running up onto the hills there. And it looks like we might just open up into a nice view once we get past this wall. Now we're heading down into this beautiful crag or rig, whichever. Rigs! And we're not far from Malham Call at all, really. Uh, but we're on the Dales Highway now. And what I would like to do is carry on the Dales Highway to Janet's Foss and then circle back. We're talking one square of the map, we're talking a kilometre. Which is about half a mile so i might one mile detour which is nothing it's nothing mate cows uh i definitely want to see both these are big deals so that's my plan but we'll see what the topography gives us well this is just absolutely stunning it's beautiful beautiful terrain Pennine Way will carry on up there, but we're not. We're going down there. Where we came up from, or down. That's where we're going.
wow, what a spectacle. Fantastic, man. See why you get his, he got this reputation. Now I've started to see more and more people coming up uh, from the cove. You know, two, maybe three, clearly wild camping or backpacking, uh, heading towards Malham Town, I think, maybe. Uh, uh, the photographer sat on there, so the days of being on my own finished, or at least today. <laughs> so we've, we saw we were stood on the uh, on the actual cliff edge. That's as far as you can go. You get some beautiful views from there. We've come around, staying up on the elevation, and we're following the signs for Janus Foss, which isn't that far. But because of uh, staying up here rather than going down to the cove itself, we're getting the benefit of all these views because we've still got the elevation. It's absolutely fantastic. Camera going 10 to the dozen. Um, and you saw the sign that said there were two peregrine falcons uh, nesting there. I mean, he said, don't go any further. I'm like, who the, who the heck would go any further? And earlier, before we reached there, I was wondering why there were signs for the Samaritans. And then when I got to that cliff edge, I realized, man alive, throwing yourself off there, heck. Must be desperate. Well, yeah, fantastic. I don't. This is obviously the pilgrim hiker. Key word here. If you were to drive up here, I do think you miss something. Not having worked to get to that view, and it did feel like a reward for the last six miles. And we are about seven and a half in. I mean, to come down Ingscar, where you saw we came down, that was beautiful. You wouldn't have got that with the car. So if you only do a small bit of mileage, at least walk the entire cove all on the top as well, get the full benefit. But yeah, next on the list, Janet's Foss. And then we'll be looking for somewhere for coffee and cake, I think, if possible. And if not, we're just gonna plod on. Well, that was Janus Foss, and I made the decision to carry on around, down from Janus Foss, all the way back to the south part of Malham. Now we're going to pick up the road, walk up into Malham, regain our path. So we've added a bit of mileage on, but it was worth it. Absolutely stunning, beautiful. Uh, 
happy with these clouds these can do one but yeah off to Malham we go onto the cove back up onto the tops I need some refreshment first So if our uh, editor zooms right in, that is Malham Cove itself and we, if you go to the top left you'll see some people sat right on the top edge. That's where the peregrines were and that's where we were. But you can understand I wouldn't have come all the way down to go into the cove when ideally I wanted to go across there all the way to the other side to Janus Foss which I think was definitely the right call. And if we zoom back out again, we are now heading up the road and we've got, going to Gary, 6.6 .6 miles left and we've already done 10.6. So we've added a few miles on, but I think it was worth it. We've done some climbing. We're now eye level with the top of the cove. Oh, well, after all that, there goes our path. There's Malham down there. So we got all of our elevation on the road. I'm sweating. There's the cove. Oh. Oh my, we've had nothing but elevation since Malham. And you can see from the, the video how high up we are. We're not far from Pike Door Hill. The cairn is just poking up there. No, not going up there. Never in a month of Sundays. Oh, it's slow going. I just stopped. Take some painkillers. Bit of refreshment. Uh, change the batteries and Gary. And then pull it on. It's going to be a hard slog back to the car. Pennine Bridal Way again. But uh, I think it's the Pennine Bridal Way. Pretty sure it is. Well, there uh, you can see behind me. We're going up, up, up. <sighs> About five miles left. But hill miles. So we're twice as long. Beautiful though. And I'm on my own. Enjoying a bit of P and Q. We're quite busy in Malham. And I have no regrets doing this little extra bit to get Janet's Foss and then carry on down as I said and then come up into Malham, had a coffee, had a cake there were a couple of good cafes, there's a pub as well uh, and don't regret uh, not going to the cove itself it was busy and it would have been going in coming all the way back out so yeah all in all, good day so far bit hot, bit sweaty now and I'm ready for the car Whoa. good old hill climb Probably the longest one and a quarter mile going. That's us. That's definitely not us. We're going. There. to see people enjoying the hills.
and there were probably over 20 uh, middle aged to older hikers, veterans and all the gear looked like a bit of a team walk uh, and that's pretty much what I've seen today obviously with it being Tuesday on a working week uh, I didn't expect to see any the hardcore veteran youngies uh, so I've seen mostly the elderly I don't like to say the elderly older than me and uh, mums with kids and both I find really encouraging and I'm not just saying that uh, to see people at 70, 80 still hiking like that woman I saw uh, a few weeks ago you know she was a veteran she'd be doing it her whole life another one I met on the railway station when she'd been all over Europe hiking these people encourage me because I, I do in the back of my mind think well you know what have I got 20 more years uh, in my 60s I'll be looking to give it up and these people are still going so you know there's hope for me yet I think part of that is also looking after my body making sure my joints I take all uh, vitamins and look after my joints hearing spooky noises uh, to try and prolong my time actually out on the hills and I do plan on doing a lot more uh, hiking in the next life as a Christian yeah, we have the promise of a new new body on a new earth uh, at the uh, restoration of all things so unlike people atheists who have absolutely no hope but what they can get out of this life the Christian has a promise and it's got a good grounding grounded on the fact that Christ rose from the dead which is the evidence we need to show that he was telling the truth and then we can have a hope in that one day we too will rise from the dead so you know whatever I don't get done this time around I'm sure I'll get done in the next life now you can see our descent heading towards Settle. So since we came from Malham and had such a hard trek to the top of the hill um, once we hit the flat it's been very pleasant uh, the temperature stayed really quite cool so you're getting the benefit of the sun but you're not sweating too much you're sweating so it's been absolutely perfect you can tell the winds picking up a bit but it all depends where you are in relation to the hills we're in the valley at the minute so it's just a gentle breeze Man alive, perfection. It was absolutely the right call to do this one today. And I'm glad that the busyness seems to centralise around Malham itself. People driving up, doing the short walk and then going back to the car. You get a few on top, actually crossing the Pennine Bridleway. Obviously we've seen quite a few. Well now it's gone all quiet again. This is Stockdale Lane. We've got about three and a half miles left. I might have a break. I'll see how I feel. I'm quite comfortable motoring along. As I said earlier, I've got the rest of the week to chill out and relax. Might see what's going on at weekend. Whether I'm going to do some hiking then. But yeah, get everything clean, get everything packed away. Job's a good one. I'm in quite a good mood. I don't feel particularly exhausted though. The uh, climb to the top of the hill. Coming from Malham was, oh wow, that was steep. But we got there. And what can I say to that? Beautiful. My pictures uh, are all going to be pretty much the same whole landscape. <laughs> it's just all beautiful. What more can I do?
2.3 miles left. Just steady plodding along this lane. We're far off over there near the hills on the other side. I could see a group of four, uh, four or so hikers and they did that usual thing that bugs the living daylights out of me. Uh, one leader was way off in front, massive gap between him and the uh, person in the middle and then two right at the back and it proper annoys me. If you're walking in a group you should know by now your strongest people should be towards the back, your weakest people should be towards the front. There shouldn't be gaps, you should all walk at the same pace and that pace should be set by the slowest person in your group. You know how demoralising it is to see somebody marching off ahead with you feeling like you're the one holding everybody up. Bang out of order, irritates me no end. Don't do it, it's not smart, it's not clever. It's unfair on people. If you don't want to walk with them, don't walk with them. That's all I've got to say. If you don't want to walk in a group, don't walk in a group. If you want to blitz a walk, go and blitz it with somebody who wants to blitz it too. And sooner or later, it's going to be your turn. Someone faster, someone younger, someone healthier is going to leave you behind and you're going to feel like rubbish. So, knock it off. You're going to walk in a group, have some humility. Be humble and be loving. Think about what it means to be that person. Go to the back, encourage, move them forward, gently, with love. It's not rocket surgery, it's not brain science. This is one of those boots on the ground bonus moments. Penang Bridleway's down there. And as you can see, it very much is a bridleway. But it goes down, south, loops back, up into Upper Settle. Upper there? Upper there? Upper Settle. So it's longer because on the map, this was just a white track. But as you can see, cars come in, multiple cars have come. This is the shorter route back to Upper Settle. So I'm going to take this one. There's nothing down there. There was a waterfall to go and have a look at. I can't be bothered with that. It's way off track. And as we diverted enough for uh, Janus Foss, I feel we've earned this little detour. Should take a bit off the mileage. Well, back at the car, sweltering car. I don't want to open the windows because there's people around <laughs> They wonder what I'm doing. Um, I just needed to wait for this guy parking his bike up, debating whether to pay the extortionate amount of £3 for a ticket. It's not even £3. It's less than that. Up to two hours, £1.70. Come on, people. It's, like, it's a cup of coffee. Probably the coffee's more expensive. Just pay it, man. Supports the uh, local business. Uh Anyway, there we go. Stunning, fantastic, brilliant, great. Loved it. What a buzz. Um, hard work, totally agree. Um, so if you remember, just a quick recap. We started in Settle, a small uh, village town. We went from there, we joined the Pennine Bridleway, which gave us a bit more of a gentler climb up onto the uh, moorland. It doesn't really have a name, it's the Craven area. Um, take your mick, take, take, take your mick, take your pick about which moorland you want to call it. So we got up onto the top there. Followed it all the way around nice and level once we'd done the climbing initially, um, which was graft. And then we did a couple of miles all the way to Malham Cove. We had those fantastic views. I think from then on it was just gorgeous. Maybe right from the word go the views were there. Uh, then we decided to... I'd sort of, in my mind, I was going to do it, so we committed to Janet's Foss, and it was quite easy to go from the top of Malham Cove uh, over across to Janet's Foss, which is lovely. Um, I hate to say how busy it is on a weekend. Wow. I mean, it was busy enough now, and it's only Tuesday. 
so we went from there and then it was a quite easy decision to make to follow the foss or follow it all the way out of there uh, down to the bottom of Malham, south of Malham, walk the road up, stop for a brew and a cake. And I said at the time, there's cafes, there's pubs, a uh, nice place to get a bit of lunch. But then we went from there to pick up the original trail and it meant going up the main road. And it was probably the easiest way to get back up onto the tops. But my, what a climb. It was a slog all the way up to the top. Um, and it only flattened out sort of into the moorland. So you have to be prepared for that. From there, it was relatively flat and then it came down. We had a really steep decline down to settle, uh, but which is always easier than going up. Um, some poor cyclist was trying to make his way up. What a guy. Um, so yeah, so there you go. I absolutely loved it. Um, what I will do... I can't, yeah, there we go. It was starting to fade out. I've not done it yet. So I will lean over now and give you Gary stats. Bada bing, bada boom. There you go. And I can't see him. Guess what? It's just special effects. Just hang on. Let me bring him up on my, my phone here. I'm so badly prepared today. Right, so 16.3 miles in the end. So we only added two miles on, considering we had a massive detour. Not seeing how red my face is. Got a lot of sunshine today. Uh, it took eight hours. Um, average, <laughs> we had a bit better uh, moving average this time, Gary. 2.8 that includes all the elevation so on average it always works out roughly about two miles an hour given stoppages and uh, stoppages were two hours and 14 minutes oh that's bruise that's filming that's everything added up i do wish gary would tell me the total amount of elevation i climbed not to worry there might be a setting for that anyway bye bye gary well, until next time gary has totally been on his best behavior these last few trips I um, think it definitely was the battery compartment. So the little battery springs need uh, opening out a bit to make them tighter. They don't bounce around. Right, I'm hoping that that bouncing on my camera is my voice and not the fact that I might not have recorded a word of that. Should be fine. Right, I'm going to set off home, um, pick my wife up tonight, and then we're going to relax for the next couple of days, get the editing done, and then we'll be back stronger, faster. Ready to hit the uh, trail again, probably this weekend. Right, guys, thank you very much for joining me today. I hope you enjoyed some of the views. hope you enjoyed the colours, uh, oh, the strong greens, the blues. Uh, vibrant, vibrant today with the sunshine and uh, moderate temperature, about 10 to 13 degrees. Perfect walking weather. Right, guys, I will see you next time back on the trail. <laughs>